good afternoon or good morning, everyone, depending on where in the country you are. Thank you so much for joining us today. I think that you will enjoy our webinar today featuring Marilee Orsini. Today's presentation, you may notice we've put you on mute mode, which means we can't hear you talk, but we've only done this to reduce any background noise from anyone who might be joining us a little bit late. But if you do have any questions about what we present today, please type them in the box you see to the far right of your screen, and we will either answer them as asked during the presentation or immediately following. To give you a little bit more information about Marilee Orsini, our featured speaker, she is an expert marketing strategist and a pioneer in the home care industry. She started her own home care agency back in 1981 and ran it successfully for over 17 years. So she has been in the trenches. Uh, she transferred her passion after selling that agency into helping other home care agencies grow through strategic marketing practices. And she's been speaking nationally and writing on this subject ever since. CoreCube, which is the business Merrily founded and runs, has been implementing her strategies for clients in a variety of aging care industries for many years. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Marilee. Thank you, Marissa. And thank you, everyone, for attending today. First, let me apologize for those of you who um, thought we were having the webinar last week. I did, too. I We had a a literally uh, technological issue that had to do with location and uh, we could not get internet access so I do apologize for that it was totally unintended and as a marketer you know I absolutely hate that but I'm glad that you have stuck with us those of you who are newly registered and those who had to wait a week thank you so much for attending today um, the first thing I'd like to do is quickly go through a recap because this is a six-part series and what I found in working with um, different businesses that provide aging care services or services to the industry is that it is this basic misunderstanding of what marketing is that gets people into so much trouble. So what we're going to talk about today is actually integrating all of the marketing strategy with the various channels, meaning that you're taking your strategy and you're going to then see how does that work so that I can actually uh, market into different ways people get this information. So the first thing that I see that happens incorrectly is uh, people not understanding actually who is the target. And the target market for aging care services is going to depend on whether you are marketing to frail elderly or whether you're marketing to active elderly. And if it's the frail elderly, rarely are those people making decisions for themselves. Usually someone else is making that decision or helping them make that decision or bringing resources to them. So someone else is doing the research, someone else is making the phone calls, and someone else is going to help them make that decision or in some cases insist that, that care be provided if they're in a situation where they're, they're not safe. And normally in families, that's the oldest daughter or the daughter who assumes the caregiving role, sometimes not always the, the oldest daughter. Uh, secondarily, the, the, if there are no daughters, there will be a son, and sometimes sons do, do come up and, and take that caregiving role. That certainly does happen. But, but primarily, for a generalization, it's the oldest daughter. So you have to realize it is people who might uh, be considered aging themselves. So if someone is 95 years old, for instance, the daughter or the son who might be helping could be 70 to 75 years old, or it could be a granddaughter who, um, who's already eligible for AARP. So it is really important to understand who it is you are targeting with your messages and your visuals. It could also be trusted advisors, because when someone does have a need for care and doesn't understand what's involved and what it's going to cost and how long it may take, they might turn to a trusted advisor as well or to someone who has actually gone through this and experienced it. So the making decisions about care is rarely the older person themselves if they're the frail elderly. And it might not be someone who is local. It could very well be that a family member is trying to provide care or coordinate care or research care 
um, from a distance because you can see there certainly are many families that live apart, children and parents. Um, and then if there's active elderly, then that elderly person themselves, him or herself, along with their spouse or partner perhaps, or a group that they belong to, they're going to be making decisions for themselves. So if you're marketing services to an active elderly client, you are marketing to that person. But what I would caution you is that uh, if we're talking about elderly as being over 65 as elderly, then that is a huge percentage of the population and getting, um, getting greater all the time. I believe there are 10,000 boomers a day turning 65 now, and that's been going on for a couple of years, so these numbers are growing in staggering amounts. Um, so, but how do these people get their product and service information? With the exception of some rural areas where broadband internet is not still not accessible, and I experienced that actually last week, so uh, with the, with the, um, the exception of those areas, then there are people of all ages finding information on the internet, going online to search for information. And as mobile devices get easier and easier and more prevalent, then mobile device usage we're also seeing a huge growth rate in. Our second part of this series was really talking about how do you reach more with less. Uh, money and that goes back to understanding the marketing strategy and you know just like when you're taking a trip if you have a map and you know where you're going and you've planned it out ahead of time you're going to get to your destination quicker you're going to see the things you want to see along the way and you're going to have a much more pleasant trip well the same is true with a business and marketing strategy you really do need to have a written strategic plan and that plan really does need to take into consideration exactly who is your target. Again, are they frail elderly? Are they active elderly? Are they local to the community? Are they long distance? Are they people who have wealth and means to pay for services? Or are they people who are going to be uh, looking for care that's provided by the government? So you really need to know your target. And you need to know the message. For all of those groups I just mentioned above, there would be a different message that would resonate to people. A younger person is going to like a hipper message. An older person is going to like something that's more defined and more to the point. And someone who doesn't understand a service offering is going to also need some explanation. So um, one of the big things I see that happens in home care agency marketing is usage of industry terms to talk about the services when someone absolutely has no clue. I was asked recently, so you're providing skilled services, isn't everyone who's going to come into my home being skilled? <laughs> so not having any clue that in the industry there were differentiations between skill and companion personal care and, and that those vary by state. So knowing your message is incredibly important. And then more important today in today's marketing and continuing to be more important as marketing continues to change is the visual. There's a lot of text and a lot of information that's available out there. The wealth of information is not the issue. It's getting someone's attention and it's also which um, and having that visual makes that really much easier. So marrying that message with the visual so that it resonates with the person. And then what we're going to talk about today is finding a way to reach those decision makers. Um, so reaching seniors, you do have to think about, as I mentioned, all of, all of these four things. So what we're going to talk about today is what channel is best used to get the highest rate of return on your investment. But again, if you don't do this first part, if you don't understand your strategy, then, um, then you're, you're going to simply be wasting your time. Um, more and more people who are online is the target. Now, there are certainly people who are not online, and there are certainly parts of our country where you do have to use marketing in different ways, but this online target is growing, and it is growing rapidly, and it is growing exponentially. So. Um, and you really do need to realize that, that having a lot of your marketing effort put into what's online and how you are perceived online will make a difference. 
So if you just have an hour a week, how can you do that to get best results? Well, number one, you have to start with the plan. And this should say a written plan because what we're going to talk about today is using the same information in many ways in many channels. And so this identifying who your best targets are with the best chance of success. An easy thing I say to do is to look at where you've currently had successes if you've been in business for a while. So it will surprise you if you take your client base and you look for who is giving you the most referrals. You look for common um, common service providers, common doctors, common hairdressers, common pharmacists. You look for for commonalities amongst those people that you are serving and that will help you better prioritize your targets. And then for your messaging, you know, you may think you have the best message in the world, but you really do need to to test that and see what is going to get the most results and the internet is really good for that. And then looking at your competition. Obviously, if you have a competitor in your area who has been there for a long time and is highly branded and successful, you do not want to copy them. You want to make certain that you are differentiated and that you have something different to offer and so people will remember you and not think of the competition all the time. And then consistent branding, that is incredibly important. Um, but First, you have to make certain that you have good branding. Um, and it must, again, the branding has to be visually pleasing to the audience and also needs to make sense with the industry that you're in. And measuring for results is something, if you measure for results and then you turn around and do more of what's working, you will continue to see success. So when marrying the, the message with the visual, this is incredibly important because of the visual um, the visual importance that we have in marketing today. I mean, I don't know any other way to say it. Um, and it really does have to all resonate. Um, I did talk to a client the other day who had a logo that did not seem to go with home care. Um, it was totally unrelated and actually um, a bit on the whimsical side and maybe even a tad offensive. And um, so I think uh, understanding that visual because to take that visual and try to marry it with some message is going to be really really hard and again you can track this and see particularly with social media you can track and see what visuals are people um, looking at and what resonates with them based on if they are actually clicking through or taking an action on that visual. Um, you will see today and in everything that we do in today's marketing, your website really is your core marketing uh, piece and there are no exceptions to that. It really is. In, in today's marketing, there's simply, um, there is no other way to get around that you do need a good website. It needs to be visually pleasing, it needs to be easy to navigate, it needs to be branded to your agency, and it needs to have bulleted point text and lots of good information on it. Um, also, I talked a little bit on this webinar about the increase in usage of mobile devices and those are continuing to increase. For a couple of years we did not see a big increase in mobile devices but we are starting to see that increase now. <clears throat> and as more people are learning how to use mobile devices and becoming mobile and as broadband access does gain greater spread across these United States, the mobile devices will be more and more used for lots of things but one of them is searching for resources. So getting found by search engines is, uh, is really important because of the website. So designing a website that is um, easily found and working on that is definitely an issue with marketing that, um, that should be considered. Uh, in our fifth series, we talked about social media and what was the right social mix. And I'm going to bring some more social media information in today so you can really see what is working and um, what's going to work best is going to vary, but you can learn how to use social media and you can see how some of these things do work and how to use them and then again measuring for results. So today's webinar, how do you integrate channels for the best marketing penetration? Um, we really want to look at this use of content because content is really king right now and uh, for a lot of reasons. Let me just mention that 
with all of the Google algorithm changes that have happened over the last year, and with the ones that continue to change, the important part of all of this is content, relevancy, uh, recency. Content must be maintained, must be updated, must be relevant, must be unique, and must really pertain to what, your, what service you're offering. And for home care specifically, there's lots of, lots of things that people might want to know because home care is really not a one-size-fits-all business. You might have someone with Alzheimer's disease, might have someone whose family member has Alzheimer's disease, or you might have someone who's broken a hip and fallen and is um, immobile and having trouble recuperating or have a stroke and is trying to recuperate. So what someone's interested in reading and finding and learning about and becoming educated on is going to differ depending on what their specific need is. Um, and what happens with this content and what happens with taking information and using it on the internet and in social media and in a variety of ways is really about engaging people. At this point in time in marketing, very rarely are you going to create something that you're going to push out to people and make them buy it. Um, but there will be many more, some of that still happens and still is important in some situations. But the basic component is integrating all of this so that engagement does occur and so that someone can respond when they see something from you and that they can interact with information. And this educational content is generated basically for marketing purposes. It might be educational in nature, but the idea of it is people have needs to find out information about care and that's what that's what the content should be. Um, then we're going to talk a little bit about the basics for a plan and I'm going to show you some ways to implement. I said the agency was core and I'm going to show you a few websites and how people are taking their content and using it in different ways. Um, this is a home care agency in St. Louis continuum owned by a good friend of mine, Barth Hollihan, and he's been very successful. He not only has a master's in social work and understands the aging process and understands home care, but he also has an MBA, and he truly does understand and embrace marketing. And what we have found is that is really the key to success. Marketing is not a one-time event. It is not an, something that should be put on the back burner. Marketing is something that should be incorporated into the day-to-day -day business and it should permeate the agency and it really, or the business, it really should be something that everyone thinks about because again, in today's engaging marketing environment, other people besides just a designated marketing person have the capacity to, to input, to engage, to share things and to, to make marketing better. So I was one of the things, you know, Continuum is in St. Louis and they've chosen to basically look at local flavor. Uh, and we have found that for the agencies that, that are locally based and can do that, if they can bring some local flavor in to their website, then that, that immediately makes people feel comfortable. And the other thing that works is personalizing the the business so that you know who you're dealing with, who is the owner, who's the management, and, and finding out something about them. And um, in this case, too, um, Continuum has done a good job with, with using a bit of humor here. So um, looking for peace of mind, home products to simplify your life. That's a great um, and absolutely great banner on the, on the home page. So this is just to show you a, a very, a very good website and how it's being used well. And then on their footer on the website, they have their social media channels listed right here so that someone could, if they want to find out more, if they haven't gotten enough information on the website or if they just want to go find out about uh, how they're engaging in social media and what's current, then they can go to, to Facebook, LinkedIn, Pinterest, and Google Plus right from any page of the website. Um, Continuum is one of the best users of Pinterest that I have seen. And Pinterest is really especially helpful to the home care agency. Um, and they are using this, I, I only pulled some of their, um, some of their, uh, their, their groupings for, 
the um, for Pinterest, but it's they really are doing a, a fabulous job, and they're they're really spanning, looking at the frail elderly and also looking at those people who are making decisions, who are active elderly, and also helping give people some some good ideas and good information about if, if they want to choose in-home care. So it's especially helpful to a home care agency if it's used in this way um, because Pinterest is so highly visual and that visual does resonate with people and we are seeing an increased uh, interest of people going to Pinterest first and then coming coming directly to the website after that. Um, here's a way that Continuum is using Facebook. Um, sharing videos for Father's Day. This was last Father's Day, but this is a, a really a, a heartwarming video, and it is something that, you know, one of those tearjerkers, but it was, it is something that, um, that does speak volumes when someone is, was, if someone were looking for care and found this and looked at it, it really would make them understand that Continuum does understand home care very well. The other way they're using this is, here's an invitation that they are, they've sent out invitations, so they've sent out something in the mail, they've sent out something in email, but they're using Facebook again to reinforce what they're doing and to spread that because with Facebook, people can share, people can like, and so that message is, is moving from just being a static message into the potential of being viral. Um, the other thing is here's an awards lunch, and this is a really nice way of, of them saying that they were active in this caregiver awards luncheon. So ways to take information and show it in, in, in different ways. Now, there's a lot of informational topics on Continuum's website, and they've been a client of ours for a long time of our MOST program, which is directly related to home care marketing and positioning the agency as the expert in care. So, But all of these resources that you see here, the caregiver support and tips and the choices and decisions, those are informational topics that, that do have a lot of good original content in them that helps with the search engine optimization for the website, but also it gives continuum ideas, and we call it legs in the marketing industry, but it gives them ideas for how do they take that information, how do they take that content, and use it in a lot of different ways. They have an in the news section on their website, and so when they are um, featured in a news article or featured in a, you know, in a TV uh, segment, then they take that and put it on their website and link that back to that. So someone then who comes on the website will see, you know, not only are they giving information out, but they're also being used in the community by the newspaper and by the television to to talk about these issues and and they cross promote that. Um, this this is a the article itself and a great a very great quote by Bart. Barth Hollihan and there's some other quotes in there, but this is, they've linked this directly from their website over to, to this newspaper article. Now let's look at um, an industry, the support service. This is software for the home care industry. Um, and when I say the website is core, it really does mean that this is where people are going to get your, your best information. You know, you have the capacity on the website to have an amazing amount of information. And the more information you have and the more current it is and the more it is maintained and updated, then uh, the better that your results getting ranks in search engines is going to be. Um, but what I, what I liked about this is that we are really looking at real people who use this service and what do they say about it and what results are they getting and are they happy users and how long have they been users and what do they say about the management and about training and about service. So this website is core really does give you the opportunity to do that, to share that. And here we've got the visual married with the message. Um, HomeTrack has little men that it uses as uh, to do a variety of things, but um, here you have uh, this visual, so obviously checking it off the list of this is a great thing to do, a positive green check. So that is a visual that marries with this message very, very well. You're going to get 
great results. You're going to hear real stories from real clients. So um, now this is their Facebook uh, page. So here's you, you see your little men who are doing things. And, um, but what Facebook does is really allow a business to extend their reach because of social media is something that people will share links or those the messages will show up and if something is of interest then it's not it's not someone searching for that but it will gain interest when someone does see it so um, Facebook really does extend a business's reach and one of the ways that this business uses Facebook is sharing some customer information they uh, write at home uses home track as their scheduling software provider so they have a lot of right at home franchises as many as there are all out there using home track and right at home has a um, has a Facebook page they also have a newsletter that they send out so it so what home track can do is take information from one of their clients it's good relevant information and post it and then uh, then someone who sees that can also share it. So um, if you will note that um, that from all of these messages, this is really the only one that's actually selling. And um, and this one, the, the rule is about 1 in 20 you should have on, if you're, if you're posting on Facebook, about 1 in 20 messages ought to be directly related to selling. Um, the other thing is looking for content that is shareable. You know, what's happening in the industry? Where can someone go to find assistance? So shareable content is incredibly important uh, because what you're trying to do is get people to, to gain interest and you're also then able to take content from one thing and share it across many different channels. And this was an article that was uh, in, the, in the magazine, but what HomeTrack has done is had it in the news section. So they're also sharing that on their website. And they're allowing people to post to Facebook, to Google+, to Pinterest, and to Twitter right from that very page. So if someone were to see this and want to share it, they could share it immediately. Now this is another home care agency and this agency is based in New Hampshire and they've done a lot of things. Local flavor, um, the same that Continuum did, they've got a lot of local flavor. They've gone a little above what Continuum did because all of the photographs used on this website were actually taken by Jason who is the, who's the owner um, and he and his wife Jen are both involved in the business but they also have been very dedicated to marketing and they understand strategy and they also are doing everything that they need to do in order to implement a marketing strategy and it is working for them. Um, I included this home page because I think it's a great mix of testimonials of where they serve, the fact that just this visual that they're an award-winning agency um, and that they're private and family-owned care. These are all messages that would resonate very, very well with someone who is searching for home care. In fact, we have had, um, you can ask Jason this and it's true, several instances of people who have gone and looked at his website and said, you know what, I don't need to look any further. I have found I have found who I'm comfortable with providing care. So, um, so and it started with, with the website. They are very good about using visuals to tell a story. This was the click through for that Golden Trial Award that they showed on their home page. But here you can see wonderful visuals of who they are and, you know, just makes you feel if you were a, a daughter looking for care for your parents and they happen to live in New Hampshire, you would feel really good about this. Um, a, they won an award and they're, they're not just showing canned shots, they're really showing pictures that do tell a story. And they personalize very well. Um, this is again about the award. So you see this award is showed up on the home page. It showed up on the inside page where they're talking about it. And they've also posted it on Facebook. And in addition to just posting it, they personalized it. Because here you have, then you see them and, um, and again, personalizing that care for a parent or for a loved one is incredibly important in home care and social media allows that. But do you see how we're, we're using the content in a variety of different ways? Um, 
the other way that content can be used in a variety of different ways, and this is just an example of a paid directory listing. This is a paid listing on Caring.com. And Caring.com does offer reviews. And this is important for a couple of reasons. One is Caring.com is a very highly ranked website, and it's important in the industry. So it is crucial to have links from important industry websites back to your website. And so what LiveFree has done is ask their customers to give them reviews after they've had service, and their customers have. Now, every customer's given them five stars. So again, if you're searching for care and you were to, to go to caring.com and you saw Live Free and you would see this, you would contact them and then you would get to their website and you would see all the information there. And then if you went to Facebook, you would see they're active on Facebook, they're engaged, they have followers, and they, um, and they really do seem to care about what they're doing. So it all builds together to work towards marketing success. And here is how they've taken on Facebook. They've taken that uh, a client review. They've repeated it here, and then they're and they are communicating back uh, with people who are in the industry and who are interested in in home care. So it's a way to take a client testimonial, the review on Caring.com, and and put it in several different places so that it has importance in many ways, the backlink and also the engagement. And here's another, this was an award that they, that they received, but posting it on Facebook just takes a minute. The only way this would be better is if they had a visual on here. And then they've built sharing into the process. They've made it easy for their customer. Look at all of the places, the social media places that you could share this. So if you happen to, to be not just a, a generic Facebook user or, or Google Plus or LinkedIn user, but maybe you use Dig or maybe you use Yelp, then you've got, you've got opportunities here for people to immediately share the information. This is from the blog on that Live Free Home Care website. Now, here's all the possible channels, and there's probably many more. Actually, uh, I was uh, laughing the other day because of the, the new advertising that's in the door of the bathroom stall, and I was just laughing there thinking um, about, I'm sitting there thinking about how funny it was and what what would you target in that particular medium. So I don't have that on here, but for the most part, there, this is a, a nice representation of possible channels or ways that you can reach a customer. And I just want to go through these and talk about quickly how when we're integrating the message, the visuals, and uh, how that is done. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, what opportunities do you have when you're meeting one-on-one? -on -one? I'm talking about whether you're going to a luncheon that is referral sources or, um, or you're attending a luncheon that might be at a senior center, but you're, you're interacting with people one-on-one. -on -one. It's just you or someone from your marketing department or your social worker or someone who's interacting one-on-one. -on -one. Well, number one is you should have a business card, and that business card should always have your website address and your email address on it, and it should also have your Facebook address on it. Um, and it should note if you have other social media that you're active on, should note that as well. So, um, and when you're there meeting with someone one on one, you can take a, a phone, a smartphone, or a camera or a tablet, take a picture, and it doesn't necessarily have to be of people. You could take a picture of the, you know, a banner with the name of the organization and a centerpiece or something. So something that's visual. If you um, if you can get a visual of people, that's good as well. An action shot rather than somebody just standing there smiling at the camera. But but you can take every one-on-one -on -one experience and you can turn that into something that you can post on social media. And what does that say? Number one, it says you're active in your community, you're engaged with the population that you're serving, and it just lets people know it's another touch point in marketing. And whether you're posting it on Facebook or LinkedIn, it really does let people know a little something about you or your marketing uh, person or the business that they wouldn't have known before. 
Sell sheets are those sheets where you have a product or you have a service and you want to list it out in one page or two pages front and back so that people will know. The same thing with the information I talked about on your business card, those should, that should be on your sales sheet too. Anything that you are leaving behind with people, that's a static piece of paper and that static marketing um, there again is some use for it because you can take it, file it, give it to someone, you know, put it somewhere for safekeeping, but it also needs to have all of those connectivity possibilities on it. So when the daughter is visiting from out of town or when the granddaughter or grandson is visiting, that they can do some extra research and, and look and see what information is there and is this a legitimate company and is this some place that you would want to, um, to search for care uh, or to call for care. So um, website we've talked about, I'm not going to go over that again, but networking has the same capacity to share as the one-on-one. -on -one. When you're out networking, you are trying to build relationships and you are trying to open doors and you are trying to establish yourself or someone from your agency in this marketing space. <coughs> so while you're networking, you're going to be giving out business cards. You're also going to hopefully get their email addresses so that you can then correspond with them. And what better way to correspond with people than you've had a conversation about um, shoes that someone can wear who has Alzheimer's disease that have GPS locators in them. And when you get back to the office, uh, post on Facebook an article that you found about those shoes and send them a link to that or just send them a link to a website so they, you are communicating with them and you're giving them information, helpful information that will also make them remember you. Um, when you're doing presentations, I always say that presentations should not just be sales presentations, they should be educational. You should realize that the reason that someone is going to need home care is they have a problem. So you should educate about how do you solve those problems and how does home care solve those problems? And what are the differences in the different varieties of home care and how does someone determine which one they need? So a lot of opportunities for educational presentations and those presentations can be golden if you understand cross promotion and you understand using the same content in a lot of different ways. When you have a presentation, you've got an opportunity for a press release. You've got an opportunity to post that press release on your website. You've got an opportunity to link to that press release from social media. You've got an opportunity to send an invitation in a variety of different social media ways to people that might be interested in attending the presentation. And then you've got opportunities to, to include that in newsletters or any email communication. Um, so you, you're using every channel possible that you can. You could, you could even create a sales sheet for that so you are actually having something physical in people's hands. Um, then the day of the presentation, you've got an opportunity to take photos. You might have an opportunity for a video for a part of the presentation. And then so you've got that day information that you can post. And then you have follow-up information after you've given the presentation. You can talk about things that happened, results, uh, things that uh, things you learned, things, resources other people gave you. So it's a fabulous opportunity to actually take the same content, the same event, and spread it a lot of different ways. Brochures, you can use the same as sell sheets. Email correspondence, I've talked about a little bit. Statistics show that email correspondence is still a way that people like to get information. And in particular, the statistics are showing that older people are using email more and more, and that is some way that they do like to correspond. So an email newsletter, again, that's an opportunity for you to to link back to Facebook, to share things, to take content and use it a variety of ways. Um, and the same with newsletters and e-newsletters. You know, there are some apps now that push marketing through mobile phones. I'm not a fan of that, but it is uh, gaining acceptance. But um, mobile phones can be used not only for texting marketing, but also obviously used to take pictures if it's a smartphone and you can actually tie in your smartphone with your social media so that you do have the capacity if you see something interesting or sweet 
or engaging or enticing that you can take a picture of it and you can post that on your social media. When you're sponsoring, I'm going to say the same thing for sponsorships I said for presentations. All of the same opportunities. It's when you decide to sponsor, the day that you sponsor, and after the sponsorship. And if you give away prizes, that's an additional way to also take that information and share it in a, in a lot of ways. Press releases you can use for almost anything. And because you distribute a press release out, there are some free services on the web that you can actually send a press release out to. If the media picks it up, that's great. If the media doesn't pick it up, you can still post that press release on your website. And the information is still there. And you can still link to it, talk about it. So whether or not you actually get a hit, you can actually use those press releases. Car wraps, the, the same thing. You ha simply have to make certain that you have your website on the car wrap. If there's enough room, I would also put a social media address, but definitely a website. And if you have your social media icons on, the, on your, like the footer or the header of your website, then someone can always find that. If you're doing radio or television advertising, the same thing. You can actually link from your website to your radio ad or to your TV ad and you can use it in a multiple of ways so that you can even then take that link and use it in social media. You can send it out when you're doing email correspondence, put it in a newsletter, lots of different ways to use, um, to use that information and the same with, with the billboards and signage. Um, blogging is probably the most important thing that you can do in terms of information and marketing because Blogging does allow that relevancy and recency, assuming you're blogging about issues that someone involved in wanting to know more about home care might be looking for. Um, but blogging is going to help with search engine optimization and is also going to give you a multiple, uh, multiple access points or multiple ways to post that information. You can use it on Twitter, you can put it on LinkedIn, you can post it on Facebook. And if you use good visuals with the blog, then um, you're going to get more attention to that. And standard advertising, we don't talk much about. That means you are buying an ad and you're simply paying for placement. So you know it's going to be there and it's going to say what you want. But take advantage of that opportunity for advertising so that you also are integrating all of your content that you're creating and your social media and your website. So just a lot of information about how do you take all of the information, how do you use it with a variety of channels, and how do you take one thing and, and give it five or ten points that you could use repeatedly so that you're using that same information over and over again. I hate to always harp on tracking and measurement, but you really are going to want to know how are you getting new clients? Where are they coming from? What is drawing them to you? Is it a person? Is it your website? Is it your engagement in social media? Is it some particular presentation that you gave? What, why are these people coming to you? And you really want to find that out because you want to find more people like that and get more people to come to you that way. New referral sources. Referral sources are really the key in home care. So you want to measure new referral sources, you want to also make certain that your current referral sources are also um, continuing to refer to you and so you've got that relationship. You want to see if your message is working or if your messages are working. So you can tell that by how, um, how many hits you're getting on a variety of things and how many referrals you're getting on your website. So you can really look at stats and see and for social media to stats, stats and see if things are working. Uh, employee recruitment is probably as important as getting new clients and the quality of the employees recruited by source is really what you want to measure. It's not the number of people who might call and want to make application with your agency, but it's the number of employees that are quality and you want to make certain that your information is bringing in more quality employees, not just numbers. Customer response to your marketing and sales efforts. If your business is growing, then people are responding well to your marketing and sales efforts. So that's a, a pretty good indication. Um, now, there are factors. There's competition. There are economic factors. There's other things that might 
have an impact on how rapidly your business is growing. But but if your customers are not responding well to your marketing and sales efforts, then you, you do need to do something differently, and you do need to make those decisions based on results. Well, I'm going to open it up now for questions. If someone has questions, please go to the right-hand part of your screen, and please enter a question and let me know if you, if you have anything. Uh, it's, um, I'm hoping that we achieved our objectives today. And if not, please feel free to ask a question, and I will be most glad to answer it. Marissa, are you still with us? I am. Uh, was there anything that you felt that was not covered in today's session? I uh, do not believe so. I think that everything was covered pretty well. I'm looking to see if anyone has a question. I see a hand raised, but um, let us uh, type in your question to that box you see on the right, and we'll go ahead and answer that question. Um, we'll give it just a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think the, the one important thing, which I hope everyone has gotten today, is that marketing is changing. How people get messages, how people respond to messages, all of that is changing, and it's changing rapidly, and that is directly a result of the technology changes. So, um, so I, that's the important part that I hope that you understand. And the other thing is that being able to take content, helpful information, and spread it a, across all channels is really going to be the key to marketing success in today's marketing environment. Well, here we go. We do have a question. Um, can I recommend a private duty target market? Um, that There are lots of private duty target markets. And if you're a startup agency, I'm going to talk through this two ways. If you're a startup agency, what you really need to do is look at who do you know within the industry who could be a potential referral source, and is there a way to talk to them and to get them to understand what you do. So private duty target markets, um, they, they span the spectrum because for private duty, anyone that has a care need and can afford to pay for services is basically a target. So it could be a neighbor next door. It could be the president of the bank who's retired. Um, so if you're looking directly to the consumer, then there are a lot of different ways that you can reach that person through all these channels I've talked about. And what you want to do is have them find you because there's no way you can specifically go directly to the consumer and reach them. So most private duty target markets have to do with referral sources. That's going to be your best way to go. And referral sources, there are traditional medical referral sources. So the hospital discharge planners, those are hard to get to. Um, physicians who are board certified in geriatrics or physicians who deal with issues that are chronic issues related to aging. So orthopedics, because people break hips. Ophthalmologists, because people all have eye issues. Endocrinologists, because a lot of older people have diabetes. Psychiatrists and, neuro, um, and neurosurgeons, because people have um, cognitive impairments and, and have issues with their brain. So you look at where are people who have care needs going. They're going to doctors. Um, you might look at local churches in areas of, I, I would say for private duty markets, you want to look in affluent areas. So what are the most important and popular churches in affluent areas? They may have senior groups. They may have opportunities for the clergy or for a minister of education to, to talk with people who have care needs. So if you really sit down and think about the possibilities for the private duty target markets, then they really are unlimited. If you're an established agency, and I mentioned this earlier, if you're an established agency, what you really need to look at is where have you gotten your success in the past. If you have 10 clients that all have COPD, then you look and say, is there an association I can belong to um, where I'm going to be to interface with referral sources who might be able to send me more COPD patients? Um, you look at uh, other 
support groups that support COPD and is there some way to get involved with those or to communicate with them. So you look at what are your current successes and how do you then take those successes and how do you, um, how do you turn those successes into more clients. A second question here, you mentioned referral sources are key, the best way to initiate connecting with the referral source and an introduction. Do you know, um, introducing your agency to the referral source, basically this is a relationship business. People want to know who they're dealing with. So um, you would connect the same way you would connect with anyone you want to meet. And sometimes it's a process. You know, you first you identify those people and then you find out you know what is it that they that you might have in common and if it has to do with their referral source and you want them as your um, to refer to you then you start communicating with them you might write them notes you might send them information uh, you try to meet them you try to schedule an appointment take them to lunch um, to you know meet them for breakfast meet them for coffee take coffee over there just find some way to get in the door to them so that you can actually have a connection with them and then once you've met them you want to continue building that relationship invite them to things include them in things communicate with them often send them information stop by to see them and uh, and look and see what organizations they belong to what associations they belong to and go to some of those association meetings and see if it's a fit for you and and that might then introduce you to other people who would refer you as well not just that one referral source but but someone else potentially um, who might be in that same group but could be a referral source. Um, this question is talk about startups diversifying until they find their best position in the marketplace. Um, as a startup you are pretty much going to take anything. I would caution you however to uh, to make certain that what you're taking are things that you can actually do and do well um, and I would also caution that you look at what are your strengths and skill sets and what's your natural uh, scope and range of influence because you will have more results if you will work that sphere of influence and people that you already know and ask them for referrals. We, we have a, a client who um, gets a lot of business from uh, fraternity and college friends and even some high school friends um, and so if you have lived in a location for a while and you and you have a good reputation in your community and people like you then I would I would look for what's ever natural uh, and and the same would, would go with um, if you're a startup and you're looking for ways to get into referral sources I would look for those that feel more natural to you if you're more if you feel more natural talking with um, a geriatric care manager or a nurse care manager than you do to the doctor then I would go that route first until you're until you're very comfortable and until you've had some success. Um, got some nice kudos, so appreciate it. Appreciate you all, all being here with me. Um, how many hours should you work on your website social media marketing per week? You know, I think you ought to blog at least once a week and depending on how much time it takes you to research that blog, I wouldn't think it should take you over an hour to an hour and a half to do that blog. And then you ought to be able to take the information on that blog and use it on social media. So I would say between an hour and two hours a week ought to be sufficient. Um, we use a tool called Hootsuite, H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E, and that allows you to post information and schedule it out so we can write a blog and then we can take posts for the week and we can uh, put them up so that we at least know that their postings are being done and being done regular. So I would say um, no more than two hours a week would be my, what would you say Marissa? That sounds about accurate, um, two to three hours. Um, and is it best to also offer skilled nursing as a service? If you are in a locale <clears throat> where you can offer skilled nursing, I would encourage it simply because one of the things that almost everyone needs as they become frail and elderly is assistance with medication setups or medication management. And if you have a skilled nursing uh, 
component available, then you can extend your service reach to those that also need that. Uh, the other thing that people need oftentimes are vitamin B12 shots, um, or vitamin B shots, so you can also offer that as a service. And you also have a nurse on staff who can come by and make uh, help with triage decisions if someone should or should not go to the hospital. Um, so I would definitely, if you can, depending on licensure and your location, offer skilled nursing. It would be a wonderful service to add on to, um, to any type of private offering that you have. Well, that is my last question, and I certainly appreciate your attendance. We will end the workshop now, and I thank you so much. We are uh, Check Back with Core Cubed. We have a series that's coming up starting this uh, early this fall. We may start it as early as August um, that is looking at a variety of ways that other industries help market home care. So, um, so stay tuned and check back. We do record these, and we will post this on the corecubed.com website shortly, as soon as it's converted. And uh, thank you again. Please uh, feel free to contact us if you have any marketing needs. Have a great day, everyone.